All right, step number one, find a container that you can put water in, whether it's a tub like this, a little tub, um, maybe it's a kiddie pool outside, maybe it's your bathtub, maybe it's a sink, um, boys and girls with parents' permission, always with parents' permission, okay? And you're gonna fill it with water. Now you don't want too much water and you also aren't going to keep this water sticking around because it's like washing your hands while you play. So, you know, don't leave it around. Make sure you rinse it out each time you play with it, okay? So we've got water here and you're just gonna pour plain water in. Seems kind of boring, but you can come up with lots of ways to play. If you have a spray bottle at home or an old cleaning bottle, you can clean it out with, just put some, put some boiling water inside it, mom and dad, and let it sit for about five, 10 minutes. Empty it out. You also could use some white vinegar, okay? Um, just to make sure none of those chemicals are still in there. And you know, you can just kind of whoop, put that in. You're gonna sink it low, fill it up, and you've got a spray bottle. Great for outdoor play, not great for indoor play, all right? only outside with these, okay? And never in people's faces, but you can spray things. It's gonna take a minute because I just put fresh water in. It's not gonna work. But you can spray the ground when you're doing your paintbrush painting. It's not gonna work right now, that's okay. Um, if you have a funnel in your kitchen, cup, here's that floating cup. Hopefully you guys can see it. I know it's kind of hard to see in here, but it is floating right now. I'm gonna take a scoop. I literally just went through our supply area and found things. And I'm gonna pour some water through my funnel into the cup and the cup isn't floating anymore. Now it's sinking. So that's a great way to look at floating and sinking with things. Remember, you can always use your brushes inside or outside. This also works if you have like cardboard from recent deliveries. If you can't get outside and you've got a garage space or a basement space, you can use some brushes in water painting on that cardboard. You're gonna be able to see it, but then it's gonna evaporate. And actually the cardboard will kind of hold some of the wetness in and kind of wrinkle, which is a great experiment. All right, stay tuned for tip number two. All right, tip number two, something fun like water beads. Now, Mrs. Johnson got these at Target, but I'm told that you can get them a lot more cost-effectively dehydrated, um, I believe on like a website like Amazon. Um, but whoops, and they just went flying everywhere. And that was what I was gonna warn you about is that these little guys like to bounce. But um, I do recommend these for fine motor and for fun. So you're gonna drop the water beads in your water. I just used a little cup to show you. And you're gonna look at, these will get bigger if you leave them, but just know that if you leave them to soak, that water is gonna get dirty and it's a little bit um, less hygienic. To combat that, you want to use one to nine ratio of um, bleach, or you can use vinegar. Um, at school, we do use the one to nine ratio for bleach in our water tables. So that's one, it's one, okay, hold on. Wow, my brain just went. So it's one part bleach to nine parts water. Figure that out. So if you have, 10 cups of water in here, one of the cups is gonna be bleach. It is strong enough to kill germs, not strong enough to stain your clothes or hurt you. Um, but if you're someone who doesn't wanna take that risk, um, vinegar also works, but I don't know the combination offhand, so you'll have to Google that or look it up, or if you know it, feel free to share it with your friends. Um, but water beads are a great way to play. They're tiny, they do bounce all over the place, so um, if you have younger children or animals you want to be careful to make sure you know where they all went and clean them up afterwards but they just add some fun to the water table i know that my students really enjoyed um having the water beads in the water table they got all over the floor it was a mess but you know what they had fun learning and those fine motor skills of trying to pick them up and hold them in your hands it's almost like trying to hold a wet jelly bean <laughs> um but that is tip number two add something to the water table that absorbs water or creates fun. You also could use something um, safe, please. Um, you could use like ping pong balls or maybe bouncy balls, but those are gonna sink. The ping pong balls are gonna float. 
Um, as long as it passes the choking test um, and you safely feel like you can put it in there, marbles are great because they're small enough that they're not gonna choke on them. Um, but something like that is great for water play, but adding something to your water that you then can use as a manipulative for moving. All right, stay tuned for step three. All right, step three might be my favorite way to play with water. And those of you who were in my class this year know what I'm about to do. So this is something called oobleck. Now oobleck is a fun little activity. It is very messy, but it's easily cleanable. So it's two ingredients, it's cornstarch and water. You can add food coloring if you want to. Cornstarch is gonna get all over everything. So again, outside is probably preferable for this, but it's one part cornstarch to one part water. So I'm just gonna eyeball this here. Woo, look at that, that was fun. And I'm gonna just kind of show you what happens when we make oobleck. Like I said, we're eyeballing it here. So the water and cornstarch are gonna mix. And they're gonna create this substance that if you put a lot of pressure on it, becomes a solid. But then when you release the pressure, slowly, I don't think there's enough water in this yet. It hasn't mixed enough yet. So with a lot of pressure, it's a solid. And when you let go, it becomes a liquid. Again, same concept, great fun. You don't wanna keep it for more than a few days. It's extremely messy. I highly recommend outdoor for this activity, but it's a great way to play in water. It's very soothing. You get that like calming effect of watching the water flow, but then you also get that deep pressure effect ooh, of creating the solid oobleck, which has now just completely gone to the bottom of my cup. And we're just gonna pour some of that water out. And you get that deep pressure when you're squeezing it to make it a solid, and then that immediate release when it becomes a liquid. This is something that we did in my classroom in our water table, and I think the wall might still have some cornstarch stuck in the crevices of the wood, so I highly recommend outdoor play for this but just know that this is an activity that is easy clean up it cleans up with water if you do it outside in your grass it's not going to hurt anything it doesn't hurt any animals it doesn't hurt people unless you have a corn allergy and then i'm sorry maybe try flour but it doesn't quite work the same um but that's my recommendation for you so that's tip number i think that was three i'm coming back with one more all right hang tight all right last but not least my very favorite place to be is the beach right of course so we can create a beach scenario right here in our water table so i've got some water i put this under this side just to kind of show you what's going to happen with the water and sand mix but i've got a little bit of sand from my sand table if you don't have sand listen you can always make mud and put some dirt in, it's really okay. Just do it outside, okay? <laughs> and make sure that you have fun while you're doing it. So I'm gonna, doo -doo -doo, I'm gonna put the sand right over here. Now this is sand for my sand table. It's got some stuff mixed in with it. It's kind of messy, but I'm improvising with what I have here, okay? So I've got my sand and in my sand, I'm gonna take some little plate crafts do, 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 do. And then over here, my water. I'm gonna throw some fish in. Do, do, do. I'm gonna put some seashells by the shoreline. Bada bing, bada bing. Maybe that crab's hiding underneath that shell. All right. I'm gonna grab my food coloring. Pause. I just put up food coloring because you want to kind of see the water. If this is a clear thing, and. I think I've got blue. I do have blue, yay. And I'm just gonna put like one, yes, two. Look at that, a few little drops of blue in there to make some blue water. Completely safe. All right, ready? It will get on your hands a little bit, don't worry. It comes off eventually. Soap and water. 
And now I've got my beach and I've got kind of some sand at the bottom. I've got some fish. I've got some seashells. Now, I didn't use a lot of sand, so I can't really dig in the sand, but I can kind of move my crabs around. The shells are great little shovels. And they'll kind of pick up that sand and you can spread it out. The sand will get colored with the food coloring if you use food coloring. So just know that it's going to be a little funky, but you know, just have fun with this. It's one of those things where be as creative as you want, do what, whatever you can do to make this a fun family event, find things around your house, find things outside, put some rocks in your water, put some seashells, put some grass, I don't care, but have fun with it. Be outside creating and enjoying the fun that water brings you. We hope you're all doing well. Send us any emails with questions, the little shepherd preschool at gmail.com and know that we are having fun creating and learning with you, even if it's from afar. We hope you're all well. Take care. Bye-bye.